The Phoenix Shrine, a place that you will unlock in the world of Palia. The particular one we're looking at today is the Oceans and Seas one, which requires you to do fishing, cooking, and a little bit of insect catching, but they all are kind of themed around water. In this menu are four buttons. Each of these are bundles. They work exactly like how Stardew Valley does, where you have the town hall and you uh, contribute items that you've gathered to put into these bundles. They require one each of each part, usually. Par the fertilizer, which you need five, but everything else just needs one of each. These items you catch, they're very rare or legendary, or you can make them. A few of these items are really easy. Trout dinner is something you're going to need to be able to get cozy with Ina with, so he can give it to you. But apart from that, a lot of these you can go and catch uh, out in the world. And uh, well, I'll be going over how to complete these bundles today, and I'll be telling you what are in these bundles so you can know if they're worth doing or not. We're going to start with a really easy one, which is the Garden Mantis, which you can find around Remembrance Beach. You only need to just smoke bomb them or use whatever you do to capture them. You should be able to capture them with anything. And once you got them, well, that's it, really. I found mine particularly around Remembrance Beach, but you can also get it around Ina's Pond as well. Just keep an eye out for really tiny little green jumping mantis. The Vampire Crab, the next one we move on to. Same capture protocol like we did with the last one, but this one is found in Bahari Bay in the Flooded Fortress. And it can be any, it can be a starred one, it can be a normal one. Just go ahead and capture them. You can find them at night around this area. All around on the beach, usually, you will find them. For the Mutated Angler, you'll need to go to Bahari Bay Cave. So this cave right here and you'll need to use a worm to catch it. Now remember when you're trying to catch fish, the better the rod, the kind of easier it is. So if you fish in this pond here with a worm bait, you can get the mutated angler. It will take a few tries, trust me, especially with these type of fish to be able to get it, but this is the area you can catch it. This is also the same area you'll need to go to catch the void ray, which I'm gonna tell you was really hard for me to get it probably took over 200 glowworm bait to be able to get this one and many more tries using the bait trick it was really rare to find but you just have to persevere and keep fishing and you could be lucky to be honest because this is just a bit rng based because you have to fight past all the other common and uncommon fish and hope that you get a void ray but this is definitely the spot you want to fish for void ray this is the cave you need to go to if there's any confusions it's the pavel mines there are several entrances and your nearest place is probably going to be the hari central stables go through there jump off and go in the cave entrance just here this next bit of coastline is where i found all of my bahari bay coast area rarities so this includes the green pearl the striped snail shell, the blue marlin, and the unicorn fishy. We will start with the striped shelled snail because it has very special requirements and we might actually find one. Actually, I think I see one right now. Yes, I do. <laughs> Thank goodness for that because finding some of these things can be really, really tough to do over again. So this is a stripey snail shell. And uh, you get these by finding them in Sarah specifically, but there's a catch. They only come around at a certain time of day. And that is between 3 p.m. and 3 a.m. You need to come to Beachcomber Cove. And I've consistently found stripy snails over here. As for the green pearls, same location, although you can also get them in Lighthouse Lagoon and Coral Shores. You are looking for this unopened oyster. You're just going to collect loads and loads of them and you can shuck them and hopefully within those you have a chance of getting the green pearl. Now I got mine very quickly however I've heard others having a lot of trouble with getting them. I also recommend while you're picking up oysters pick up the shells because they also have a chance to spawn where the shells are meaning you have more chance for oysters to pick up and then uh, the more oysters you shuck Hopefully, the bigger the chance that you are going to get that lovely green pearl. A lot of the time, you just get regular pearls and oyster meat, but hopefully you'll get the green one because that's how you get it. 
The next fish we need is the blue marlin, and I specifically found it in this spot. You need to use regular worms and fish at the Bahari Bay coastline. But I specifically found mine in this location if you wanted to give it a try. But in theory, anywhere across this coastline should work. So I was right here, and there was a guy fishing next to me, and I got it right here with the worm after a couple of tries. It did take quite a few fishing tries from when I was on that dock. So I, sometimes when I'm not catching stuff, I change position and see if that helps. Probably just helps mentally, if I'm honest. But I did get my fish from here. So hopefully you will get your blue marlin from here as well. This is also the same spot you can get the unicorn fish. However, this is probably one of the hardest fish to catch because you have to catch it in daytime and you need to use glow worms to get it. So it's one of those expensive ones that you need to capture. The long-nosed unicorn fish was the last fish I ever caught for the actual bundle. It was very, very tough to get. So remember, daytime only, glow worms and on Bahari Bay coastline. Hopefully you will capture one of them. For sushi, once you actually fish up the recipe, which we'll be going over in just a second, you make it in the prep station. And now it can be quite expensive because you need dari cloves, which you get from the north of Bahari Bay. I made a spice guide if you'd love to check that out because it also goes over heat root, which is another thing that you do need. You also need vinegar, which is something you'll buy from the general store rice and sweet leaf so and and a fish or like a random fish so there you go that's how you make sushi and you'll make it in the prep station with all those ingredients but you'll need to get the recipe and you actually need to get that in any pond that's any pond in uh, Kilima or in Bahari for me I went to Mirrorfields pond and that's where I got mine and you have to use a glowworm bait to fish it up it comes in a glass bottle with a scroll inside and you just have to keep trying to get the recipe once you get the recipe you can learn it and then of course you can go ahead and actually make it for the inky dragonfly you can find it near any rivers or ponds in Bahari Bay but I specifically found mine in hideaway bluffs and it was just around the pond edge so all you need to do is look for a dragonfly spawn near one of these areas and keep having a look around those kind of areas for me this come up very common for me it wasn't a problem if you are having issues with it you might want to consider getting a buzzy jar or something that will help you find rare insects but this is just one you need to be near ponds and rivers for and hopefully you'll find one but the trout dinner which is actually one of the harder ones to get or well most time consuming ones to get i would say because you need a tier free friendship with Ina, and you need his room key to be able to get to the recipe which means you need really good friendship with him basically the actual key is in his room and you're looking for a trout dinner book and that is how you'll learn the recipe so get mysterious neighbor with Ina, and you'll be able to grab that recipe now the recipe is not actually that tricky to make but you do need it to be a quality star dinner that means you can't give it a normal trout dinner you need a trout dinner with a star so you might want to consider using uh, golden star garlics potatoes and spices to increase your chances because it will require you to use a prism trout to actually make the trout dinner the rest of this stuff is really easy to get and you can get it anywhere however if you want a prism trout you need to fish in Kilima village lakes at day and dusk with a worm bait and that's how you get it. it is more of an uncommon fish but you should be able to come across some for your trout dinner now if we're talking good old fertilizer you need to come to the general store or there's a little sneaky trick i don't know if it will still work for you by the time you're watching this but you can you could try hydrate pro fertilizer this is what we need five of to go in our bundle now you can pretty much just buy this in the general store really easy just like that you could buy it for 40 gold for 20 you only need five so it's an absolute deal however I found that just the normal quality up fertilizer that came from the worm farm actually worked for me for some reason in the uh, bundle. So I didn't actually use any Hydrate Pro. I just used the quality up. So just you can feel free to use that and try it out. 
If not, go to the general store and buy the Hydrate Pro fertilizer. And that is how you'll get it. And the general store is just in the middle of uh, Kilima Village, if you didn't know. For the giant goldfish, I fished mine up behind Baru's house, but you can get it in all ponds in any zone. So it doesn't matter if you go for Bahari or if you go for Kilima, you can just get it in ponds in general. You will need to use glowworm bait to get it. I have had friends get it in the Mirrorfield pond as well, so just test out your luck and see which one kind of works for you. And best of luck, it is a tough one to catch because it is an epic fish, which is uh, a rarity. For Fisherman's Brew, you will need just a normal campfire and you can make it in there using an emerald carpet moss and a Crystal Lake Lotus. Both of these you can get around Ina's pond. And the recipe itself you actually purchase from Ina with fishing level five. It will cost you 1K coins to get it and that's how you make it. And once you make it, it will make you five per craft. You just need one of these and you can take it and go and submit it. Next, we're looking at the enchanted pupfish, which is caught with a glowworm at Ina's Pond, or well, anywhere in Kilima Village Lakes. So you can go to any lake in Kilima and fish up an enchanted pupfish. Now, I always find these guys pretty common, so you actually can probably get one pretty easily. Hopefully, I get them out of the big glowy pools. Usually, uh, that's the best chance I get them and you can get them from there. And then we are gonna talk about our Shimmerfin. Shimmerfin are caught in the same spot, but instead of glowworm, you use normal worms for Shimmerfin and they are rarer than the actual pupfish. So it might take a few fishes to get it, but you're looking for this tiny little pink thing that will come up. And you're just, again, in the same spot, so you can do your fishing of one worm and then use the other one if you want the other one. So best of luck fishing up yourself a shimmer fin. They're not too bad to get. Now, before we go into what you actually get from the bundles, I want to go over a little quick tip for you when it comes to fishing, because sometimes trying to fish up these fishes and you run out of glowworms and they take so long to generate, it can be handy to have a few, uh, you know, tips up your sleeve as such <laughs> so pretty much when you're fishing what i recommend you doing if you're trying to if you're running out of worms and stuff you can always cast it out and then you wait for the fish to grab your bobber but instead of clicking on your mouse button to go and reel it in you let it bite and then go back down to the uh, river floor and then once they've gone to the river floor you can reel it back up and it does not consume any bait so this way you can continue fishing for them rare and legendary fishes and uh, not use any bait up. However, this does not increase your fishing skill, just bear that in mind. But if you are running low on worms, it is a very handy thing to have and know about. That's all I gotta say there. Otherwise, you've gotta wait some more hours for more glow worms to produce and it's a big pain in the butt. I have used it quite a few times when I was getting uh, a bit scarce on worms and I definitely appreciate it. And another thing I would say is get two glowworm bins so you produce more glowworms than usual. Also at level 10 fishing you can actually purchase 20 glowworms from Ina uh, for about 10 fishing tokens. So that's another thing to know about. Now it's time to go over the bundles and what are actually in these bundles and if they are worth it. Well, I think you have to do them anyway because looking at the door, uh, in future updates you have three other terminals you need to complete. So I imagine you need to complete them all to open the door perhaps. So that's not a thing in the game right now. So you will need to complete this fishing bundle regardless of the rewards, but the rewards are a nice little tidbit on the side. Anyway, we're going to be going over the bundles and what they actually give you. I'll be going over the first bundle, which took me the longest, the fresh water bundle. So from this actual set, it will give you, and excuse me if I pronounce it horribly wrong, but the Bulabasi recipe, and it will give you a Bulabasi for free. So that is how you get the Bulabasi. Now the Bulabasi is actually requested as gifts from uh, actual people in the game so like the npcs and stuff so you will need it sometimes if you want to improve and get more quests that way so that's why it's useful but that's all you get from the freshwater bundle for the magic bundle once you completed that it will give you a honey lore 
and uh, only a honey law. Now a honey law is a very expensive ingredient because to make honey laws usually it requires gold ingots so it is very expensive and you can sell it for 800 gold currently in the game or you can use it and it will attract more insects for a short period of time. Just bear in mind that this thing is really expensive to make usually because gold is not easy to come across. So you might want to hang on to it until you get some quests from Arnie because he does have some bug quests this might actually be useful for. The next one we're going to be talking about is the spooky bundle which unfortunately I don't have a reference for but I can tell you what I got because I decided to do this video too late before I started doing it because I could not find any information online about these bundles. I was like right I'm going to put it out there for you guys. Pretty much what you get from this one is 10 tuning forks which is really nice of a reward if I'm honest with you and you get one of each type of fishing hook booster totaling up to four. Now you can also buy all of this from Ina for the fishing tokens but it's actually quite a decent reward and it's pretty nice. What tuning forks do is it helps you find rare fish spots uh, and it points you towards it kind of like the other finding tools does. Next up we have the beach bundle which is our final one which I will say is probably the most worthless reward because <laughs> you get 30 glow worms and 30 normal worms for completing this bundle which is painful because you'll probably go through that trying to get it if i'm honest with you and other fishing activities especially the sushi if you don't get lucky with the sushi you're going to burn through more than 30 glow worms easily so I do feel like maybe that needs to be a little bit more worth it, but that is what you get. When I completed the entire door, nothing happened. I didn't get any quests or anything like that, but this has been recorded in the open beta of the game. So I figures when it comes to about official or maybe some more development time down the road, this will actually do something or give you a special quest. I have heard rumors that it adds a new special fish to the roster that you can catch, but I don't know for certain on that one. But as far as I know, you complete the bundles, it gives you a little prize and you have completed the whole thing and you don't have to worry about it ever again and it's done and dusted. One thing this can also help you with though, which is good, is achievements. So catching these rare fish and recipes can get you more renowned points and that can give you special items like furniture and stuff. So actually doing the bundles is worth it anyway because you can get extra points out of your own achievements in the game which you can check in your inventory. So yep, yeah, that might be worth just doing it for that if you didn't like the sound of the bundle prices or just see how it pans out and what happens. To be honest, I had fun trying to complete these achievements. It reminded me of when I played Stardew Valley and spent a lot of effort trying to complete the bundles for rewards and it was kind of exciting to find out what came out of them when I didn't know anything. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to check out my channel. I do have a few other guides on Paleo, and it goes the current ones I have now. It's like spice guides and paleo guides. So yeah, just check it out. And if you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. But anyway, thank you for watching. I love you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.